everyone, my name's Robin Brown from Waste Is My Resource. I have been an owner of horses for many years. I live in the Serpentine Gerardale Shire and I have been constantly looking for a process that I could speedily compost my horse manure. Today we're here at the Shanley Green Adjustment Centre with the Peel Harvey Catchment Council so that I can show you the steps to go through to ferment your compost. It's a much faster process. In six to eight weeks you will get first class compost that you can use on your property. We hope that you will learn a lot from this video and I'm about to show you some of those steps. If you have a look at this pile, as we've asked our farmer to bring in two scoops of dried horse manure to organise our spice compost. We've had an extremely dry summer and this horse manure has dried out. It has started to compost a little bit. We can see it, some of the structure of the horse manure breaking down, but it is not, if I did a, a microbiology test of this um, compost, we would find very few microbes in it. And the main reason for that is because it's so dry. So that's what I've been doing here. I have dug a quite a big trench in the middle of this pile, and I've had this water running for about an hour. So it's a little bit difficult if you're starting out composting at this time of the year. If you're a first time beginner, I would advise you to wait till June, till after the ground is quite moist and the horse manure is moist. But at my place, I keep my horses stabled. So it's quite easy for me to put my horse manure in a pile and I put a tarp over it and keep it moist, even during summer. Because water is very precious and we don't want to have to waste it. And that's one of the problems at this time of the year. If we have a look over here, there's a huge runoff of the water when I was trying to wet this. Um, that's what we call hydrophobia. To prevent that, we add a wetting agent. One of the best is an eco-wet product, which contains fish emulsion. Very simple to use, you use a cap full, and what happens is that not only is the fish emulsion giving you nutrients in there, but it's also helping to break down a waxy layer that happens when the bacteria die um, in your soil. So it's a bit of a double whammy. We ask everybody to add organic matter to their soil, but if the bacteria die when it gets hot and they get exposed, then we also get this hydrophobia issue. So this stuff, it looks like it's got a few bubbles. Whatever you do, don't use soap, because the soap and the ingredients in it, even if it's environmentally friendly, will also have an effect on the soil and the groundwater. And that's already starting to soak down an hour ago. That was flooding all over the top of this compost pile. This is a very um, cheap moisture meter that you can buy. We need it to be in either the green or the blue zone. Um, so that the microbes can breed. And if we go up into here, hopefully you can see that that's what's happening. So that's what it should be like all the way around. So there's a spot that's not good. Just try and work that in and we can see how dry that is and dusty that bit is. So I'm just gonna add a bit of water into that section. Now the tractor can do it a certain amount for you if you're, if when we start layering, but it's really a good idea to have done some of the work first. And again, if you wait till June, you don't have to do any of this first stage. So there we go, that's gone through already. So now we're going to uh, get on to the actual fun part, making the spice mixture that is going to be our ferment to add on to the compost. Now it starts from a very, very old fashioned technique used in Asia for thousands of years using lactobacillus that we get from the atmosphere in a very simple method, basically taking half a cup of rice, soaking in a cup of water for about a day, and then using that liquid that's drained off the rice, um, feeding it with milk, and then tipping off the curds, and then adding molasses to it to make a very stable lactobacillus. In a way, I suppose, similar to yogurt. But that's our ferment and that's the basis that we are going to add microbes to our compost to speed the process up. 
So microbes are naturally occurring in all organic matter. Um, the ones that live in a ferment though, like low oxygen conditions, the ones that live in our compost heap, like a little bit of oxygen and hence a bit of aeration. So we're going to be mixing both and again, that's what speeds the process up. And to make that, we not only have our lactobacillus as one of our microbes that we're going to put into this drum, but we've got a whole suite of things to add to it. And what we're doing is basically adding minerals into the water with the lactobacillus so that that can go into the compost. The only other interesting thing that I've learnt with this technique is that if you pick any green product, green leaf product, so I've got a whole lot of old sweet potato cuttings in here. I've got comfrey leaves, which are particularly good because comfrey um, is a deep-rooted plant that extracts minerals from the ground. And so while these plants are photosynthesizing, they're also pulling up minerals from the ground and those minerals are going to migrate into that water. So that's our tea bag. Now into the tea bag, and we put it in a hessian bag that can filter through, um, but not add uh, solids to the water. Because at the end of this, if you want to put it in a watering can or a spray unit, you don't want solids. So that's like a, a filter or a strainer. So we're going to also add into that mixture about a kilo and a half of bran. So that goes in there. We need to add either seaweed powder or kelp. So this is a concentrated form. On my recipe, um, I'll tell you exactly how much, but for me in this one, my concentrated form, I put about two of these teaspoons in. There are lots of minerals that come from ocean loving uh, or plants or that grow either in the water or along the water. You can also add salt water as well to it. A little bit will also have those minerals in. We add rock dust, just a handful of rock dust. Now rock dust, is a valuable collection of minerals from our Darling Ranges and also the basalt rocks at, um, let me put a couple of handfuls in there, basalt rocks down at uh, Bunbury. And they contain all the natural occurring minerals um, that the plants can use. And we need about a kilo and a half of blood and bone. Now blood and bone is pure nitrogen and it will send the uh, bacteria particularly crazy. They love nitrogen. Um, and the best part about it is that they will absorb that nitrogen and lock it up and convert it or metabolise it to a form that uh, the plants will be able to use. Last of all, we're going to add our lab serum, but I'm going to put some water in the bucket first. So you need about 20 litres of water. Now the water needs to be rainwater. If you've only got access to uh, chlorinated scheme water, you need to leave that bucket with its lid off for at least 24 hours. We add our lab serum into there. And then we are going to feed the um, bacteria that are already in that lab serum by feeding it about a cup of molasses. They're greedy little fellows. So I'm going to stir that around a bit, it takes a little while for that to go down. And then I'm going to put my tea bag in there. And that would stay normally for about a week. So that you can maximise uh, the transfer of, of microbes off those plants and out of that bran. Now the bran is a special one, that will also attract fungi. Uh, fungi love bran. And about once a day, you take the lid off and just give it a shake around and that will help with that transfer of all those minerals. And there's no need to put a little valve in there to release air. It doesn't get that um, fizzy at all. I've done this before. Now with the wire, sometimes it's hard to put the lid down, but just put that on firmly. And what will happen each day is as you take the lid off, you'll get a stronger pickled smell and you'll possibly get little white mould occurring over it. White mould's really good, don't worry about that. That's fungi growing in there and it's um, a great addition for your compost pit. That's basically how we make our spice compost. Now I'm going to show you how to add that spice compost onto your compost pile. What we're trying to do is to um, increase the 
rate of uh, breaking down. So all composting happens in nature. It happens without any intervention from humans. If we want to speed the process up, one of the things we can do is to increase the nitrogen or carbon ratio. Horse manure is almost perfect. 30 to one, 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen is the perfect uh, ratio. Horse manure is about 27 parts to one. So we need to add some extra carbon to it. It's no good to go and buy stuff because that's not what this process is all about. It's about using waste. Most farmers, most horse farmers have got old straw or old dry leaves. So we're going to use some straw today and put a layer of straw over the top of my layer of horse manure. So ideally about 30 centimetres of manure and then about half of that, 15 centimetres of carbon over the top of whatever carbon source you've got. So now I um, collect all the food uh, and organics from the SJ farmers markets and I keep a lot of the paper from the, um, and the bamboo products from the hospitality trucks and I put that in as my carbon. So now we've got that layer in there, what I would do now is add my spice compost from my big drum with a watering can or a spray unit, whatever you want to use. And I go over the entire layer, and obviously I've only got a sample one here. But if you're making your compost pile, it's a good idea to have a minimum of a cubic metre, because what you can achieve with that is you can get the temperature on your compost bin up really high. The whole purpose of hot compost is to kill weed seeds. So if you're a fussy gardener or a fussy farmer and you don't want weed seeds, you get your compost up to at least 55 degrees. But if you go any higher, you start killing the beneficial microbes. So I'm gonna show you in a moment how to use a compost thermometer as well to keep an eye on that temperature. Now, if for some reason your compost after three days is not starting to go up in high temperature, then it probably means that your horse manure is either too dry or it's composted away. And what you can do is add some straight blood and bone or chook manure into that pile. And the high nitrogen level gets, with water, gets the microbes excited. So we would continue that process, another layer of straw, another layer of spice compost, and keep going until my metre high has been achieved. We've finished our compost pile, and we need to dig a groove in it before we put our tarp on, just on the very top. And the purpose for that groove, that deep trench, about 10 centimetres deep, is so that when we lay our tarp over, we have transpiration and it will drip back down in there, not down underneath and dry out. It's really important to check the temperature of your compost pile. Um, for the first week, you need to check it every couple of days because it must be going up um, high. And I've got a compost thermometer that you can hire from the uh, SJ Community Resource Centre. You will need to put it down in, in the middle to start with and then you need to check as it goes up. So standard temperature, you're probably looking at air temperature which today is like 26 degrees. In three days this should be up to nearly 40 and in five days it should be up to 50. So the last part of the process is simply covering this uh, compost pile. We've put our um, layers in, we have our spice spray on there. Now we have to keep the moisture in and let the microbes get to work for six weeks. So I've got a nice big tarp and I'm going to cover the whole thing and you will need to, if you live in a high wind zone like we do, make sure you've got lots to hold this down and there's no flapping parts anywhere. You're going to have to check particularly um, di diligently for the first week every three days to make sure just in one, one end you'll have to lift this, lift this tarp back, get your moisture meter out and check that the moisture is still high and secondly get your compost thermometer once a week to see that that temperature is going up. 
we want it to stay up around 50, 55 for one or two weeks and then after cool down. So if you'd like any extra help doing this uh, kind of uh, composting, just check out my website, wasteismyresource.com or look out on my Facebook site and send me a message and I'm more than happy to help you. Bye for now.